you tonight for this uh, evening service. Let's uh, begin by singing this song, Awesome Mr. Sai. Awesome is the sign of your holiness. Majesty is your purity. Your righteousness shines brighter than the sun. Father, thank you. Ilo robo shande. Hallelujah. Tonight, Father, we come before you, and as we stand here in this place, we bring our loved ones who are not safe and contend for their salvation. We pray, Father God, that you move in their hearts through the work of the Holy Spirit, bringing conviction to their hearts. Tonight, Lord Father, tonight we also bring this service unto you and everyone that are here and also at home watching live stream. We pray that God tonight your word will speak to your people, your word will set them free, your word will heal them wherever they may be. Again, thank you for this day and night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, we do welcome you to tonight's service and 
live stream service. And um, we're going to turn straight uh, to the Word of God, uh, turning to the book of First Peter, uh, chapter 2. Um, book of First Peter, uh, chapter 2. We want to read from verse 11, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 11 to verse number 13. Okay. So it says there in 1 Peter chapter 2, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and um, pilgrims, Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Amen. Uh, we are living in between, or we are living in between two time zones. One, the day we receive our salvation, and the other one is the actual day, or the actual tangible day, when our salvation becomes truly real, as uh, real as in the presence of God as is in heaven. We are saved now, but until we are there, we are not there yet in heaven, uh, until we are there, until we are in the presence of God, where we hear the good words of God or Jesus, well, come thou, uh, just and faithful sermon, enter into the joy of the Lord, uh, we then can truly say, uh, we are safe when we are there. We are safe now as well. Now in between these two time zones, we are to, as we've been hearing, to conduct ourselves. And we are to have a certain set of behaviors. Uh, two Sunday nights ago, we look, as, we look at children of light conducting ourselves as children of light in this uh, dark world that we're living in. And last week, we look at conducting ourselves by working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Our conduct, our behavior matters whether we make it home or we do not make it home. Okay. And last week, we are called to work out our own salvation. Not work for, but work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, to do that, there are one other things that we are also called to do. And that is to conduct ourselves as uh, God's people here, as pilgrims. Our text here says in verse 11, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. There's a movie called Pilgrim Progress um, by John um, Bunyam. And uh, he's a preacher. He was locked in jail, persecuted for preaching the word of God. And while in jail, he began to, God began to give him a dream of a man called Christian. And Christian, in that dream, uh, begin to go on a um, journey. Okay. And uh, when he woke up from that dream, he began to write about that dream and that story of the title called Pilgrim Progress. Pilgrim means a traveler. Someone who is just passing through. In our case, uh, the journey is towards heaven. Heaven is our aim. Heaven is our destination in that journey. Suppose you are 
in Nepal, and you are Malaysian. Okay. Your goal while you are in Nepal is to go back to Malaysia. Okay. So you are not a citizen there, you're traveling there. So your goal is not to stay there, but your goal is to go back to Malaysia. And our goal is heaven. And this is not our real place of stay. We are on a plane bound for heaven. Now, this is what Peter wanted uh, his readers to, to see. That the Christian life is a pilgrim life. It says here we are sojourners and pilgrims on earth. And here in this text here, Peter begins to, as he says that, or to those whom he uh, refer to as beloved, someone that he cares uh, much for. And he says to them that they are sojourners and pilgrims and, and then he begins to show them four things that they must do to live as a pilgrim. Likewise, this text is also for you and I. And there are four things that involve a pilgrim life, a pilgrim lifestyle. Okay. So the first is a mindset that a pilgrim must have. A pilgrim must adopt. A pilgrim must embrace. He says in verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as sojourners and pilgrims, this is what and how he wants his readers to think about themselves. To think about themselves as sojourners and pilgrims. Okay. Here we find that pilgrim refer his readers as beloved. Seeing yourself as beloved people of God, we are to see ourselves here in this world, not as citizens of this world, but as uh, travelers, as strangers, or as aliens, or as the word pilgrim. The meaning there is one who is on a temporary pass, or one who is a temporary residence, or traveler in a foreign country, passing through on his way to his home country. And as such, uh, such a people or such a person has a different mentality about life than a permanent uh, native uh, uh, citizen there. For one thing, a traveler doesn't live according, number one, to the customs the standards of the foreign country. For the sake of maybe certain uh, customs, not to offend the locals, maybe he may temporarily you know, embrace some of their customs. And, um, such as if you go to Cambodia, um, there are certain hand signs that um, they are forbidden to use that over here in Malaysia, that those certain hand signs doesn't, um, doesn't it means it's, it's nothing wrong, but when you're there in Cambodia, there are certain hand signs that we do here are offensive there. So if you're there, you don't do it. You don't want to offend the people who this uh, belief or custom that they believe is bad for them. Pilgrims don't get attached to the country that they're passing through. They always have a destination in mind. And they look forward to getting there. If they pass through a very nice, nice looking place, you know, very, um, you know, nice, they may enjoy the beauty of it. But they won't decide to, you know, camp there. You know, if they stay in a nice hotel, they don't 
go and hang their family photos in the wall, you know, and then start to do renovation there and settle down in that hotel room. They have a transit mentality. They're on a transit. They're on, they're going to leave. They want, they have, their spiritual bags are packed ready and they want to go home. Okay. And uh, it affects their mindset because uh, uh, their, their thoughts okay, is that wherever they may be, their home is not there, but their home is in heaven. Someone says this, we are, we are in the land of the dying. Christians have this mindset. We are in the land of the dying, heading towards the land of the living. That land of the living is heaven. Okay. But we are living in the land of the dying. Okay. The world, as Hebrews says, because of sin, sin has decayed the world. Sin has rot the world. The world is rotting away. Okay. The world considered this the land of the living, but they are he heading towards the land of the dying. But we considered this as a land of the dying, heading towards the land of the living. The second way or lifestyle of a pilgrim is that uh, he believe or she believe there's a war to fight. Verse number 11 says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. It's a war to fight. Okay? There's a war that is coming against his soul. To stay means to hold oneself constantly back from, to restrain oneself, to pull oneself back from, which is a Christian war to fight because fleshly lust, the flesh is not a friend. The flesh is an enemy to a pilgrim, an enemy of God. Fleshly lust, the flesh wants to make uh, the pilgrim to become a citizen instead of a pilgrim. Fleshly lust basically speaks about this sexual desire, but also can speak about all kinds of self-seeking uh, desire that involve lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure. Abstaining again means to restrain oneself from doing or giving one, uh, our flesh to that to enjoy. And we war it through pulling ourselves back or pulling our flesh back from our flesh having its own ways. Meaning, you do not let your flesh has its own desire. That's why Jesus says, he who wants to follow me must take up his cross and then he says, deny himself and follow me. Deny himself. Okay. And one of the ways you do it is by weakening the flesh that your spirit man becomes strong over your flesh and you do it one of the way through life of fasting and praying. Isaiah 58 speaks about fasting and praying. And what it does, okay, it breaks certain yoke of bondage. It just sets certain captives free. Okay, it undo heavy burdens. So fasting and praying uh, does brings domination over the flesh so that the flesh does not have its ways. The third lifestyle of a pilgrim is to is to maintain the pilgrim lifestyle. Verse 12, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, 
that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. It speaks about the conduct. It speaks about that conduct seen through good works. Seen through Matthew 25. Seen through generosity. Seen through helping those who are not able to help you in any way, those who are in need, okay, by offering, by meeting a need. Okay. And the scripture says that in verse 12, that they, those who may observe, those who observe you by your good works, in turn they glorify God in the day of visitation. To also understand the Christian uh, pilgrim lifestyle involved what you call a day of visitation. Verse 12 again, Peter says that the non-believers, when they observe your good work, will glorify God in the day of visitation. That day of visitation can be speaking about the day of rapture or referring to the future day of judgment. There's a day of God's visitation and to remember that as a Christian, to never forget that there's a day that whereby all pilgrims have to stand before God on that day. For us, the point is that as pilgrims, we keep that great day of visitation in our mind, in view. We see it. There's a future day called the future day of visitation. We live now knowing that one day, everyone must stand before God. Either commendation by God and say, well done. Either or either condemnation. I do not know you. Okay, be cast away from me. Thus, we should seek to live with that day in view so that we will hear God say, well done. Not say, be away from me. And as we live with that day in view, we should also seek to persuade those who are on the road to condemnation to receive God's mercy, to receive Jesus Christ into their heart before it's too late. Or close. What we have here on earth are all really shadows. Okay. Not really the real good stuff. The real good stuff is waiting for us in heaven. A pilgrim after traveling many, many, many months or years finally get to go home where the good stuff is home. Is where they are supposed to go to. Being a pilgrim, we have this always in our mind that wherever we go, it is home sweet home we want to go back to. Okay? Just like you travel whatever country you may, okay, Malaysian, when we go out, we like we call this home sweet home. The Syrians, when they leave, they still call their Syrian a place where they are born home sweet home. So, but we, uh, is, heaven is our home sweet home. So we keep this in mind wherever we go that is a pilgrim's life, home sweet home. So in this, between your salvation, the day you, you receive Christ, you confess, and the day of actual reality whereby you experience salvation in the presence of the Lord. Conduct yourself as pilgrims. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this truth. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to help us live this life, live this lifestyle of a pilgrim. Live as sojourners 
And having always this mindset that this place, no matter how beautiful, do not let us be deceived by the deception of Satan. Satan always tries to paint this world as the, as heaven. But we know that earth, there's nothing beautiful. Heaven is our real home. And Holy Spirit, help us to abstain from all fleshly lusts. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.